guys, in question four, I did mention that question four is also still um, measurements because we're going to be calculating um, an area of a triangle. Okay. We're going to be calculating the area of a triangle. We're going to be um, using knowledge that we have when it comes to volume to help us determine um, the radius, right? And uh, in question 4.2, Three, we're going to be basically dealing with um, some assembling there. So in question 4.3, guys, we're going to be dealing with assembling. Okay, so let's basically get started with that. Okay, question 4.1 says, Mr. Fenter bought a farm in order to sell chickens and vegetables. Um, on an extra B is the layout plan of the farmyard. Okay, so we're given an extra B here. And this is basically the layout plan of of Mr. Fenter's um, farm, okay, right? It says, question 4.1.1, name the feature on the layout plan which has an irregular shape, okay? So when you basically do an analysis of what is happening here on this layout plan, we've got that shape there, that is a triangle, that is a circle, um, that is a square, that is a rectangle, that is a square, right um for the vegetable garden we've got a rectangle for the solar greenhouse and so on and so forth and then here we've got an irregular shape for the perennial um garden beds okay so therefore the feature that basically shows an irregular shape is the perennial garden beds okay so for question 4.1.1 our answer is what the perennial garden beds. Question 4.1.2, it says, the letter J on the map represents Jojo tanks, okay? So we see that here, this letter J basically shows that this is our Jojo tanks, okay? And there's a Jojo tank, okay? So there's a Jojo tank next to the livestock barn. There's a Jojo tank next to um, the solar greenhouse. There's a Jojo tank next to the raised um seedling beds right and 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 so on okay so let's see give a reason why it is important to have a water tank at one's house right so why would you think it's important to have a water tank guys okay guys a water tank is 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 it's important to have a water tank, right? If you can afford to have one and you're basically living in a property that is big enough to 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 um have one, is that you can save a lot of water, especially if, for example, you're even a farmer um with a Jojo tank. Because we know that with your Jojo tank, a Jojo tank basically stores um rainwater okay so you can basically use that rainwater to water your plants um or your vegetables and so on and so forth okay so in this case you can basically it's important to have a jojo tank to save water on irrigation okay instead of using your tap water to water your plants you can just use the jojo tanks water okay so i'm going to write down that reason okay so a jojo tank saves water you can um use the Georgia tank water to water plants and vegetables instead of the water from the tap okay so that is the reason that i'm gonna put there for question 4.1.3 it says Georgia tanks are usually filled with rain water like i said okay that your Georgia tank basically saves your rain water and you can just use um, that saved water to obviously water your plants or whatever it is or maybe flush your toilets and so on and so forth okay so it usually it is usually filled with rainwater write down any two structures where the water uh, where the water to fill a Georgia tank could possibly come from okay so where would that water come from okay so if you've basically also just looked um maybe um in, maybe you at church you guys have a jojo tank you'll see that the water for the jojo tank actually comes from your gutters okay so when it drains the water obviously falls on your roof it goes onto the gutter and then it travels travels from the gutter goes into your jojo tank okay so that is the first reason another reason because they said write down two structures where the water to fill a jojo tank could possibly come from right you can also just look at here right so that could also just help you um determine uh where the 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 water for the jojo tank 
could come from right we already mentioned that the water can come from gutters that is one reason another reason is that we can say that the water could also come from um so we can say it could it can come from because we can see that the georgia tank is situated next to the solar greenhouse it is situated next to the livestock barn it is situated next to um yeah so we can say that the water from for the jojo tank could actually come from the solar house the solar greenhouse gutters okay or you can say the water can come from the livestock barn gutters okay right um and and that. so i'm just going to use those just making use of the picture to help guide me as to what i have to write there okay so let's just write that down guys please forgive the noise um that's why i don't like recording in the afternoon because it really gets loud like it really gets loud so i really apologize if the noise is just getting to your nerves guys um i had to take out this video tutorial so and yeah i was really tired so i couldn't record at night so i had to record in the afternoon so really apologies for the noise okay so we can say that the water can come from the greenhouse uh let me see the solar greenhouse gutters so it's the solar greenhouse gutters or you can also say the water um from the the for the jojo tank can come from the livestock barn gutters okay so we can basically get that because they said they wanted two reasons okay question 4.1.4 says calculate in meter squared the area of the garden expansion you may use the following formula right so here we are already given the formula that we can use to calculate the area of the garden expansion it is the area is equal to half times base times height okay so here we can see that we are calculating the area of a triangle okay that is the garden expansion that is the area that we are calculating okay that is our base that's 17.024 meters and this is our height that 19.5 meters okay so we're going to use these values our base and our height and we're going to substitute that into our formula to then get the area so let us quickly do that okay so here what is so it's going to be half which is just the same as just saying 0 0.5 multiply what is our base i did mention that the base is equal to 17.024 and then multiply what is the height it's 19 okay let's just put the meters there multiplied by what is the height the height is 19.5 meters okay and then if you punch that into your calculator you'll get that the area is actually equal to 165 uh, 0 0.9984 meters i'm gonna just put it squared like that so that's meters squared okay let me just also just do that meters i'm just gonna put the squared like that okay that is the area of our garden expansion all right right let's have a look at question um 4.1.5 it says mr fainter decides to replace the fence around the circular chicken side um the circumference of the circular side is equal to 18.852 meters okay guys when they're talking about a circumference right they are basically talking about the area or the the the, the length around um this circular chicken side okay so let's say for example this is our circular chicken side we are given what the circumference is right that means that the distance around the sides right the length around so if you had to put a string around that and you would measure that um string um like for example like in some um tape right that length would be um 18 point eight five two meters okay then they say that by means of calculations advise mr fainter which option is more economical so we are given two options that he has here in terms of the cost of um 
the wire mesh that he'll need to now put around this uh the chicken side right we are given the option a we are given option b and we need to use by means of obviously calculation and decide, determine which um price will be economical okay here guys when they basically sell the the, the rolls here right they actually sell for option a right they actually sell a 10 meter roll okay right for this amount and for option b they sell this per running meter they sell it per meter so one meter is equal to one meter if you need one meter you will pay 127 rand and 30 cents right and then here we are told that you for 20 for a 10 meter roll for a 10 meter roll right you pay um 1154 okay to determine how many rolls um we will need right okay one roll right is equal to 10 meters right so we want to see how many rolls we will need okay so we're just going to take this value here or this equation here and then we're going to use this to determine how many rolls uh, we will need okay so you're going to take that circumference of 18.852 meters we want to determine how many rolls we will need to pay for okay so you're going to multiply by one roll divided by 10 meters okay so if you do that 18.852 multiplied by 1 divided by 10 you'll get that you actually need 1.8852 rolls okay however guys um in this case because they're selling a full roll okay a full roll uh you need to round this up to the nearest whole number okay because uh you can't round down you need to round up in this case because you need a full uh roll okay so in this case that basically means that we will need two rolls of um option a okay so you'll just take the two rolls and you're gonna multiply it by one one five four and if you multiply by one one five four two multiply by one one five four that basically gives you for option a you would have to pay two thousand three hundred and eight okay all right okay so just to reiterate a point here for option a guys the only sell this per roll okay so in this case you need to note that one roll is equal to 10 meters okay and if you have a circumference of 18.852 meters right you now need to determine how many rolls of this mesh wire will you need okay and then in this case that is why we multiply by the roll and we divide it by the meters okay and then here we'll see that okay the units for your roll and your roll will cancel and whatever value that you have it will be in the units in rolls okay then from there just take the two rolls that you need and you multiply it by one one five four to let you uh, to give you the conclusion that you'll need two thousand three hundred and eight rand uh for option a okay then what is happening in option two all right here we're given the they they set their price okay um based on per meter per running meter right so here when we were given the circumference of the circle it's in it's 18.852 meters okay but then we cannot have decimals in this case because they sell this mesh wire per meter it needs to be a full meter okay so that means that we can just um round up this 18 uh, 0.852 meters to 90 meters right so it's just going to be 19 meters because if you round down um you're going to be short of a, a mesh wire okay so you're just going to need 19 meters and then now we're going to use that 19 meters to determine uh how much you will pay for option b okay so we'll basically take now that 19 meters because you just need 19 meters because they sell the mesh wire per meter so in this case we need to round up we can't use that 18.852 the way that it is because they sell 
per one meter it needs to be a whole number so for us to change that into a whole number it's going to be 19 meters multiply by what you want which is we want the price so it's going to be one two seven point thirty divide by what you have which is the meters okay so that will cancel whatever answer that we have it will be in rand so it's going to be 90 multiply 127.30 okay which is going to be 2418.7 okay so we see that for option uh b that is how much mr finter will pay for option A, we see that is how much he is going to pay. The question is asking us which option is more economical. So we can see that therefore option A is more economical because he pays um, less. Okay. Okay. And we are basically done. Okay. Let's have a look at question 4.2. Question 4.2. It says that one of the Jojo tanks on his farm has 5,000 liter capacity. The height of the tank is at uh, 220 centimeters calculate in centimeters the radius of the tank okay so we are given information about now this jojo tank right and then we are told that this is question 4.2 gonna just do it here okay so we're given information about this jojo tank right so we're given a jojo tank i'm just gonna draw what this tank looks like okay and we are told that right the height okay so the height of this jojo tank is 220 220 centimeters okay um and we are told that um the, uh, the it can take a cap it has a capacity of 5000 liters okay so that means that we are already given what the volume is okay how much water this jojo tank can hold and it can hold 5000 liters of um, water okay so now you may use the following formula okay um to basically calculate the radius of the jojo tank okay so here we given the height we given the volume all that we need to do is we need to determine the radius okay how do we go about determining um the radius okay we're just going to take the volume right we given the formula volume is equal to 3.142 multiplied by the radius squared multiplied by the height okay we given the volume in liters so the first thing that we need to do is we need to convert this volume into centimeters cubed right because we're given the height in centimeters we're going to be substituting the centimeters into the formula we also need centimeters in the formula for us to be able to determine the radius in centimeters okay so that is basically what's happening here let's convert this 220 centimeters if you take 220 i mean let's convert the 5000 liters to centimeters we are given an equation that we're supposed to use we are told that a thousand centimeters cubed is equal to one liter okay we are told that a thousand centimeters cubed is equal to one liter so we're going to take that five thousand liters you're going to multiply by what do you want which is the units in centimeters cubed so it's one thousand centimeters cubed divided by what we have which is your units in liters the liters and the liters cancel meaning that okay 5000 multiply 1000 gives us 5 million right meaning that the units in centimeters cubed is 5 million okay is 5 million 1 2 3 1 2 3 centimeters cubed okay right and then now we are more than ready to substitute things into our equation okay we're going to substitute that five million into our equation it's going to be the five one two three one two three centimeters cubed multiplied by you can just take that 3.142 multiplied by the height so i'm just gonna um substitute the values 
So it's going to be 3.142 multiplied by, I'm just going to write it as your R squared, that is your radius squared, multiplied by, we already know what the height is, it's 220 um, centimeters, okay? Then here, you're just going to take the 3.412, you multiply by 220, 3.142 multiplied by uh, 220, you will get that it's going to be 5 million centimeters cubed is equal to 691.24 centimeters, okay, multiplied by your radius squared. If you want to basically isolate the radius squared, on the right hand side you need to divide both sides by 691 so it's going to be 691.24 centimeters 691.24 centimeters therefore radius squared is equal to 5 million divided by 6 nine one point two four centimeters okay you will get that you get seven two three three point three seven seven six nine eight centimeters cubed divided by centimeters you will be left with centimeters squared okay centimeters cubed is centimeters times centimeters times centimeters divided by centimeters so the centimeter centimeter cancel you're only left with two centimeters okay therefore now we need to still isolate our r how do you get rid of the squared you need to write square root it square root it okay therefore your r is equal to this value all squared okay remember i'm only gonna round off my final answer just to maintain accuracy three seven seven six nine eight okay therefore your radius in centimeters is equal to eight five point zero four nine two six six three centimeters right and then what was the question saying um determine the radius of the tank okay i'm actually gonna run off to two decimal places okay so therefore um the radius is going to be equal to 85.05 centimeters okay we have basically calculated now the radius of the jojo tank okay so that is that guys for question number 4.1 and 4.2 um, i think the trick with this question is question 4.9.5 you guys just realizing that you need to basically round off um to the nearest whole number before now you start calculating the cost of the wire mesh okay let's have a look at question 4.3 which deals with assembly mr fainter uh, bought a chair which still has to be assembled. Below is a picture of the assembled chair sharing different parts with some dimensions in inches. All right, so we're given a chair um, that has been assembled, right? And we are basically given the dimension, dimensions of this chair, right, in um, inches. In inches, right, we are basically um, here, we're given like the the length of the chair we're given that it is um 22 and a half inches right because we see when we've got those two uh, the inverted comma there we are told that it basically stands for inches then we're given the height of the chair it is 42 inches we're also given the is it the width of the chair which is 18 inches right we also told that um, this is the slates, right? Those are the slates. Um, this is the seat, okay? Um, we are given that that is the stretcher, right? So this is what stretches this uh, plank from that plank. So that is our stretches. Um, so that's your stretcher there. That's your side stretcher there. Also, those are also your um, your your side stretches, okay? So you're gonna basically use the information, not this information. To help us answer the questions 
that are given. Let's have a look. Question 4.3.1 says use the information above to answer the questions that follow. Write the following as a simplified ratio. Okay, so I'm going to move the drawing to the side. So we want to basically write the following as a simplified ratio. What are we writing as a simplified ratio? The width of the chair to the height of the chair. So we are basically going to do exactly what this question is um, telling us. We want the ratio of the width of the chair, right, to the height of the chair, okay? So what is the width of the chair, right? Here, yeah, we're given that the width of the chair, right, is that 18 um, inches, right? Remember, guys, the length is your longest um, dimension and your width is the shorter dimension that is why we are saying that the width is 18 um, inches right so it's going to be 18 inches to what is the height of the chair the height of the chair is 42 inches all right so remember guys if they wanted it in simplified ratio what do we need to do now all that we need to do is we're gonna we want our ratio to be in the form of one is to something that means that we need to basically divide the left hand side by 18 inches and if we divide the left hand side by 18 inches that means that we need to also divide the right hand side by 18 inches okay right so it's going to be 18 inches right okay what you do on the left you do on the right 18 18 inches right so 18 inches divided by 18 inches is equal to 1 is 2 42 inches divided by 18 inches that is equal to 7 over 3 however guys you know that we can't leave our answer in this form right we cannot leave um our ratio as a fraction right therefore we're gonna now multiply by 3 on the right hand side multiply by 3 on the um left hand side and then three multiplied by one is going to be three is to seven therefore our ratio in simplified um form of the width of the chair to the height of the chair is three is to seven all right let's have a look at question 4.3.2 all right calculate the height of the chair um actually converts the height of the chair two millimeters you may use the following conversions okay so in this question we basically want to convert the height of the chair um to millimeters okay so how do we do that guys right we already know what is the height of the chair the height of the chair is equal to 42 inches right 42 inches now we want to convert these inches right to millimeters how are we going to do this all right so to basically convert the inches into um, millimeters the first thing we want to do guys remember we are given the formulas that we can use the equations that we can use here right we are told that a thousand millimeters is equal to 3.28084 feet and we're also told that 12 inches is equal to one foot okay so what we need to do we first need to convert these inches to feet and once we have now the inches in feet that will basically give us an opportunity to now convert those feet to millimeters so we're going to first off start by um converting the inches um to feet so we're going to start off with this equation here once we've basically done that then we're going to continue and convert the feet um to um, millimeters okay so follow with me right so we're going to take that 42 inches right and remember guys you multiply by what we want we want our units in feet so gonna multiply by one foot right and you are going to divide by inches right 12 inches because those are the units that we already have okay so what do we see here okay we see that the units for your inches and your inches cancel okay so if you punch this into your calculator you can actually just count uh punch it in as 42 feet divided by 12 right and then we'll get what the answer is um in feet so our answer in feet is actually equal to 3.5 feet 
okay then now we're going to continue now we've got an answer in feet now we need to convert these feet to um millimeters so what are we going to do here we are going to still multiply by what we want divide by what we have and we're going to use this equation the second equation that was given to us here right so we're going to basically take the 3.5 feet okay the 3.5 uh, feet multiply by what we want we want our units in millimeters so we're going to multiply it by a thousand millimeters and we are going to divide by what we have when we divide by what we have you're going to divide that by your units in feet because we have our units in feet okay so therefore we're going to divide by that 3.28084 feet okay we see that now the units for feet are cancelling right so therefore what is our answer so 3.5 multiplied by a thousand millimeters divided by 3.28084 that basically will give you now our answer as one zero six six point seven nine 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 okay six six millimeters okay so if you had to round this off to just two decimal places that is approximately equal to one oh six six point eight zero millimeters okay so therefore that is the height of our chair in millimeters all right so let's have a look at question 4.3.3 it says an extra c an extra c shows pictures and written instructions for the first steps to assemble the chair so we are basically shown pictures that show the first steps to assemble the chair we need to choose an assembly instruction for column b that matches a picture in column a write only the letter i that right i the three i's next to the question numbers are 4.3 a um 4.3.3 to 4.3.3 c okay so let's see what's happening here in an extra c guys okay so that is our an extra c guys right um and we are basically given the assembly in instructions right we are basically told that okay this is your diagram a um b and c so we need to figure out what is happening um at a and we need to match what is happening with a with the correct um description in b okay let's see right it says that for your um i attach the stretcher to the front legs as shown using glue and screws okay this one right the second one says attach the front legs to the back legs um with the stretches okay so here we can just see attach the front legs to the back legs with the stretches okay so we can just start off by this first one here right it's saying we need to attach the stretcher to the front legs as shown using glue and screws so here where do we see a picture where we've just only attached the stretcher remember i did mention although when we started that this part is our stretcher right and we see that okay here the stretcher has been attached to just the front legs so you see that they've attached the stretcher which is that to the front legs so we can already see that b is equal to that i so b and i go together okay then let's have a look at the second one it says attach the front legs to the back legs with the stretches so we see here this is our front legs right this is our back legs right and these have been attached with what with the stretches right so we can see that actually c matches with number two okay and then lastly then what is happening with this last one we've already done your number one okay we said that your a we said that your b is your i right and then we said that your c is your your two i's right therefore then from process of elimination that means that your i your a is three okay so secure the back sl uh, slates remember these are your slates okay 
and they are at the back so these back slates are secured using glue and screws and position the uh, back stretcher and then here we see that they've positioned the back um stretcher on the legs as shown okay so we've basically answered this question so i'm just going to quickly um write that here we've done question 4.3.3 okay 4.3.3 a b c we said that your a is number three your b is number one and your c is number two okay i hope i clarified those for you guys okay then let's have a look at question um 4.3.4 it says states where the p or q represent the side stretcher so what is the side uh stretcher guys if you have a look at this diagram here i'm going to just try and zoom it in for you guys so that you guys see what is going on okay what is happening in with the side stretches okay do you guys see that here the side stretches the plank here it's a bit slanted do you see that do you see that this plank is like a bit slanted it's it's not straight okay at that position there okay so it's a bit slanted do you see that the side stretches uh the, the this plank there do you see it's a bit slanted okay when it gets to the back because the back is a bit slanted okay so that means that now okay using this which is it going to be p or q which one would represent the side stretcher and you can see that there was q do you see that it's also a bit slanted there do you see that okay do you see that it's a bit slanted okay therefore for 4.3.4 our answer is q all right and let's have a look question 4.3.5 it says the seat is shown on the sketch below describe how you would um, position the seat so that it is attached to the rest of the structure using the given letters a b and c on the picture and um s r on the sketch okay so we can see that the seat is shown below and the s and the r are the notches how would we basically attach or position the notches or this seat um on this diagram okay so here guys you see if you want to basically the seat is, 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 is it looks like this, right? So the longer end is like that, okay? Right? Okay, so that is what we're basically looking at there, right? And the S will be positioned by the, the S will be, for the seat, will, the S notch will be positioned against the B, right? And the R notch will be positioned against the C. Or you can even say that the S notch, okay, because you can even swap it around. Okay, the S can also be positioned against the A or um, and the R notch against the D. Okay, so whichever one um, way that you look at it um, uh, would be correct. Okay, so we're just going to then write that for 4.3.5, how would we position the seat? So here I've basically written that for the S notch will be positioned um, uh, or placed against B. And the R notch will be positioned or placed against C. Okay. Or you can just say the S can be positioned against A and the R can be positioned against D. Okay. So those would be then the acceptable answers. All right. And guys, that is it for question 4.3 that basically um, dealt with assembling and also doing some conversions as well as ratios. I hope that I made that question nice and easy for you guys, right? Then in the next video tutorial, guys, we're going to be looking at the final question, right? In the final question, we're going to be doing some map interpretation. So please make sure um, that you stay tuned for that. That is it, guys. And I'll see you guys on my next upload, Distance Learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. Bye, guys.